Hello, recruit, and welcome to Astroneer Academy 104, Research and Resources. With basic survival and power production covered in the previous courses, it's time to take a look at research and resources in Astroneer. Research is the key to unlocking new recipes for items to craft, and resources are used in crafting those items. Most new Astroneers will quickly discover research samples. The two most common research samples are organic, which appear on various plants, and mineral, which can be found on rock formations and in caves. Research samples have a tooltip prompting you to scan them, and when you do, they generate bytes that you can use in your research catalog. You can also find technology research samples on some wreckage and in exodynamic research aids. And these technology research samples will yield more bites than the organic and mineral varieties. The technology research samples are permanently consumed once you scan them, while organic and mineral research samples are renewable and will reappear after a short time as long as you do not dig up the plant or rock formation that they are attached to. Once you have some bites, you can start thinking about unlocking items in the research catalog. While you can open the research catalog by clicking on it from your backpack, there are also hotkeys to open it, and those are clearly identified in the Astropedia. The four buttons above the research catalog display represent the various printers that you will use to craft items that you have unlocked in the research catalog. The first button is for items printed on your backpack printer, the second is for the small printer, the third is for the medium printer, and the fourth is for the large printer. The holograms along the left side of the research catalog represent each item that can be researched, and they're broken down into categories for each row. For example, items you can research to be printed on your backpack printer are grouped by miscellaneous items, oxygen items, power producers, train tool augments, train tool drills, jetpacks, and more. You can navigate up and down each row, and to the right and left inside each row as you select the items that you wish to unlock with research bytes. The main display of the research catalog shows you the currently selected item, including the icon that represents it, a basic schematic of the object, what resources are required to craft it, and the bite cost if you have not yet unlocked that item. If you have unlocked it, the bite cost simply changes over to unlocked, and the text above the schematic will state that the item is available, while the schematic itself becomes a light blue hologram instead of a dull gray hologram. If you have enough bytes to unlock the item that you have selected, then go ahead and click that big green button on the research catalog. And here's a pro tip from Gina, one of the Astroneer Discord admins. The research catalog has a very useful but often overlooked feature. Have you ever noticed that small light on your left side? It can notify you when you have enough bytes to research an item. To make use of it, open up your research catalog and select the item you'd like to unlock next. Now you can go about playing the game and earning bytes. When the green light comes on, you know you've earned enough bytes to unlock the item you've selected. No more opening and closing the research catalog just to find out if you've earned enough bytes yet. Thanks for that pro tip, Gina. Now, we are not going to cover every single craftable item that you can unlock in the research catalog, since we will eventually cover most, if not all of them, in future Astroneer Academy courses. But the research catalog does highlight the need for collecting bytes so that you can unlock essential items in Astroneer. Now, you can wander about hoping to find research samples to scan, but that could take a very long time. As an alternative, you can create a research chamber. You will need to collect two stacks of compound and one stack of resin to create the research chamber. You will also need a platform large enough to support the research chamber because it will require power to operate and it can only get that power by being connected to a platform. You start the game with the ability to create the medium platform A, which will require two additional resin, but it is large enough to hold the research chamber. Both of these items can be created on the starting medium printer that was included in the startup package that we discussed in Astroneer Academy 101. With both a platform and the research chamber created, unpackage them, connect your platform to a power source, and place the research chamber on top. The research chamber converts objects into binary data. To do this, you place a research item, research sample, or resource into the center of the research chamber, then press the key indicated on the research chamber's tooltip to examine it. That'll open up the research chamber control panel. To begin research, simply click the big green button. On the research chamber display, you will see the total number of bytes you will receive when research is complete, along with the bytes per minute you are receiving and how long the research will take to complete. All research objects, research samples, and resources will be destroyed once your research is complete.
Be careful not to press the button in the bottom right corner of the research chamber control panel while research is in progress because you will cancel research on that object and it will be immediately destroyed. That means you will not receive any bytes that have not yet been converted into data. The research chamber will consume two units per second of power. If you're not producing enough units per second, then the research chamber will not operate at full speed and the amount of time that research takes to complete will increase. If you're not producing any power at all, the research chamber will stall, making kind of a clunking sound until power is restored and research can resume. Remember those research samples that we looked at just a few moments ago? If you place those in the research chamber instead of scanning them, you'll receive roughly three times more bytes for each one. Of course, it takes longer to convert them into bytes in the research chamber versus simply scanning them, so you'll have to decide which approach is best for you. Research items are the primary source of bytes for the research chamber, however. They will appear throughout each world as you explore as organic, mineral, technology, or unknown research items. You can find organic research items on top of or under decorator plants on every planet. Mineral research items are found on or near rocky areas, while technology research items are often found inside of exodynamics research aids or near wreckage. And the unknown research items can be found underneath many of the hostile plants that we discussed in Astronaut Academy 102. There are nearly eight dozen different research items spread across the four different types, so it's not possible to cover them all in detail. If you would like to see the full list and details for every single research item, then be sure to visit the Astroneer wiki page linked in the description below. They do, however, each offer different bytes per minute research rates and total bytes that you will receive, and they'll take you anywhere from just a few minutes to over 90 minutes to fully research. Their value in bytes ranges all the way from 450 to over 14,000 bytes each. The general rule of thumb is that research items found on planets with increasing difficulty will yield higher numbers of bytes. You can consult the planet section of the Astropedia to learn the difficulty rating of each planet and moon. And here's another pro tip for gathering a ton of high value research items early in the game. Unlock the packager as soon as you have 1000 bytes available, then find some graphite to create those packagers. When you come across a research item, you can package it, allowing it to be carried on your backpack or other tier 1 storage slot. Packaging the research item allows you to carry several at a time. When you are ready to convert them into bytes, simply unpackage them and place them in the research chamber. Going hand in hand, as soon as you have the small shuttle unlocked, take a few packages to a planet with a higher difficulty rating and gather up research items to be packaged and brought back to your base on Silva for research. This will give you a huge reserve of bytes to unlock more items. For the unknown research items, the deadlier a plant is, the higher value the bytes contained within the research item underneath it will be. Many hostile plants also contain an overlooked source of research, seeds. We talked about these seeds in Astroneer Academy 102. Any non-mutant seed can be placed in the research chamber and it will yield bites. On top of that, you can often plant those seeds, wait for the plant to grow, then dig it back up. You will often get a research item and another plant seed. Now, you can quite literally plant a research farm that allows you to harvest research items from your hostile plants. And that brings us to the Exodynamics Research Aids, which can be found on every planet. There are three types of Exodynamic Research Aids to open, which will either require a resource, power bars to be filled, or a steady rate of power to be supplied. For resource-based aids, there will be an icon on the structure that corresponds to a resource icon in the Astropedia that we looked at in Astronaut Academy 101. Insert the appropriate resource into the small hole on the front of the aid, and it will consume that resource and unlock. Research aids that require a charge will have a power meter to either side of the power cable that will fill up as you provide power. Once the power meters are full, the aid will unlock. Some of these will take longer than others, especially the ones that you encounter on increasingly more difficult planets. All of this type of research aids can be unlocked through any power source that has a power cable available, however. They will retain whatever level of charge you previously supplied. 
For instance, if you're using a small generator to power this type of research aid, and one stack of organic was insufficient to unlock it, the charge meter will retain its current level and you can return later with more organic to continue charging it until it unlocks. Research aids that require a steady rate of power will contain a tooltip that reads, Maintain Desire Power Input to Unlock. You can also easily visually identify this type of research aid because it will have a power plug, but no charge meter. The amount of power required for both the latter exodynamic research aids will vary based upon which planet you are on. Again, the general rule of thumb is that research aids on more difficult planets will require more power than those on less difficult planets. You will find that some of these types of research aids can require up to 6 units per second, though that will only be the case on the most difficult planet. The technology research items found within unlocked exodynamic research aids can often supply a very large number of research bytes, though they can take much longer to completely research. And here's another quick pro tip for those exodynamic research aids. The top that pops off of them can be shredded in the extra large shredder. That means you're not only going to get a lot of research bites, but you can also get some scrap for trading. We'll cover scrap and trading more in depth in Astroneer Academy 106. Resources are the final topic for today's course, and they appear in four types. Natural, Refined, Atmospheric, and Composites. Today we're only going to look at the first two, saving atmospheric and composite resources for Astroneer Academy 202. There are several natural resources which can be found on all planets, and they include Organic, Compound, Resin, Clay, Quartz, Ammonium, Graphite, Laterite, and Astronium. All of those resources, except that first one, organic, will always appear the same. Organic, though, can appear as grass, small plants, fungi in caves, and more. You'll know you're looking at organic because a tooltip will appear when you point your train tool at it. There are other natural resources which only appear on certain planets or moons. These are Spalarite, which can be found on Silva and Desilo, Wolframite, which appears on Desilo and Calidor, Malachite on Silva and Calidor, Lithium on Vasania and Novus, Hematite on Novus and Glacio, and Titanite on Vasania and Glacio. Aatrox, however, does not have any unique. Resources. When browsing through the planet section of the Astropedia, you'll notice that resources are identified as either primary or secondary. A primary resource will be found in caves, while secondary resources will be located somewhere on the surface of the planet. All of the natural resources can be harvested by extracting them with your terrain tool. Simply dig around them to harvest a resource. Your terrain tool will provide an audible signal each time it completes a full stack of a resource, and each resource has a different sound. You will also see the resource stack move to a slot on your backpack or fall to the ground if your backpack is full. While you're extracting resources from the soil, pay attention to the tooltip that will often appear. This tooltip can tell you that there is still a resource to be collected just below the surface of the soil, even if you might not be able to see the resource itself. This tooltip comes in handy because it lets you focus where you're digging so that you can spend your time actually collecting resources instead of just digging huge random holes. There are other ways to extract resources using land vehicles, but we'll discuss that in National Air Academy 201. You can also use the soil centrifuge and trade platform to obtain some natural resources, and we'll discuss those in Astroneer Academy 202 and 106, respectively. Many natural resources can be refined using a smelting furnace, commonly referred to as the smelter. Organic produces carbon, clay produces ceramic, quartz produces glass, laterite produces aluminum, stalarite produces zinc, malachite produces copper, wolframite produces tungsten, Hematite produces iron, and Titanite produces titanium. 
The smelting furnace requires 250 bytes to unlock the research catalog, and it is crafted on the medium printer from two resin and one compound. Each resource typically takes 20 seconds to refine when the smelter is fully powered. Your smelter will consume 3 units per second of power, and it can be a bit of a challenge to keep it fully powered in the early game. If you're not yet producing that much power, the smelter will still work, but it will take longer to spell each natural resource into a refined resource. And to bring us full circle in today's discussion, resources can be placed in the research chamber and they will produce bites. Though of course that does consume the resource stack in the process. You really shouldn't think of this as a shortcut for research, however, as the resources themselves typically do not yield a high number of bites. But research and resource can come in handy if you find yourself just a few bites short of unlocking an object in the research catalog. Now that you have learned all about research and bytes, along with natural and refined resources, we're ready to move on to storage, train tool augments, and printing. We'll take a look at all of those in Astronaut Academy 105. So until then, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vainglorious.